Here they come down towards the Lamont Strait and the Woodcut section where the brute force of the Lola Chevrolet, the T70 Spider, should be able to extend the advantage a little. But Gordon Shedley is doing his absolute best. Wiley Campaigner is the Scotsman staying as close as he can. He can possibly break a little bit later in the GT40. Yes, he can look, and he brings the gap right down, coming into the first apex of Woodcut. Now that short run up towards the chicane. James Cottingham staying there in third place, waiting to see what pans out in front. But now, as they make the run up towards the timing line, five minutes on the clock. Again, here in a straight line, the Lola just extends the gap a little. Four times a winner this year is Tom Ingram, championship runner up two years back. Now, Nick Padmore hustling on this really, really physical car. It's extraordinary, isn't it? You see the whole chassis, the whole body wafting up and down as he clipped the curve there at St Mary's, but the mechanical grip, the huge slicks is enormous. <laughs> Look at the negative camber on the inside front there, leaning right over as Padster gets the power down out of Lavant and now on the long stretch up towards Woodcut. I can't begin to imagine what it's like trying to slow one of these tanks down from the massive top speeds that they're capable of. Nick Padmore doing a good job, though. Hustling the car out of Woodcut through the chicane. Nice direction change for such a big, heavy machine. Full power over the line and having to haul the brakes. There is 32, that is Nick Manassian with the Studebaker Lark Daytona 500. It's not just the car, the, the drivers, it's the cars as well, of course, that make Goodwood. Uh, where do they find them? And every year you find something that you think didn't know that existed, but uh, looking fantastic. Adrian Wilmot owns this car. He has uh, become a real convert to historic racing, raced Formula Ford 1600s in the 1980s, and uh, retired, built up a business, and has really fallen for historic racing, got a, a nice collection of Lovely big cars that are going to be on track over the course of Speed Week. And uh, certainly here, Nicolas Manassian wringing the neck. The studio. So there, number 17 leads the way. So the boss Mustang up front, Fred Shepard to give way to Andre Lotterer. Behind Mike Whitaker's Ford Capri. Smaller engine car, but even so, staying in that lead group as they work their way now towards St Mary's. And Ollie Bryant here in another really charismatic car, this Trans Am championship winning uh, Ford Mustang rockets away and that makes a brilliant noise. Oh, it's just so unique, isn't it? Stunning noise from the Trans Am car. Now, Ollie Bryant, outstanding driver, also very good here at Goodwood, very familiar. Not all of the drivers in the shootout are familiar with this circuit. Ollie is not one of those. He knows his way around here better than anyone. We watch Ollie Bryant down through the chicane, also neat and tidy, gauging the oh. width of that huge Trans Am car very, very accurately as he guided it. And uh, he's got a Corvette Stingray at his disposal. You've also got Michael O'Brien, by the way, who is on pole position for the Glover Trophy coming up next. So he's got to adapt from qualifying one of these cars and then racing a Formula One car for the next race. It's the Corvette Stingray. Jason wheel now, I can't see. Uh, it looks like Craig Davis to me, but I might be wrong. Yeah, yeah you're right. Craig right. Davis's helmet, yeah. Um, an improvement, must be Rob Huff at the wheel for the Extic Prothero E type uh, of Richard Mines. Rob Huff goes third, 126.039. Andrew Smith pits now to give way to Ollie Bryant. Ooh, Craig Davis having a real, real slide under braking there, coming down towards Woodcut. Yeah, just gone on the brake pedal a little too hard there. Sometimes pays in these older cars to make the transition off throttle and onto the brake. Just a little slower, squeeze into that brake pedal rather than stamp on it. You can still get to peak brake pressure. You can still really wring the neck of the car in the braking zone, but just don't want to put it on its nose when the car's coming down a little flatter and that stops the rear end squirming quite as much as we're seeing Craig Davis battling the back end of that Stingray into Magwick. Perhaps uh, some kind of suspension failure there causing that. I don't think that the contact was the cause. I think that was the result, and that impeded the car's pace through the left-hander and out of it. That's St Mary's as James Cottingham just has a little look up the inside, letting Gordon Shedden ahead no. on the black bit. 
And you can see the little bit of damage picked up on the front of the GT40. Uh, and before you say, oh, touring car drivers, there really wasn't anywhere that Gordon Shevin could no, go no, then. Absolutely not Gordon Shevin's fault at all, neither driver at fault at all. There was clearly some kind of failure, mechanical, mechan mechanical failure or a puncture that, uh, that triggered that. Now we've got the resulting yellow flags, yeah. whilst Tony Sinclair's car is just off the drivers, right, out of harm's way. Right, for the race lead, they're side by side again. Sam Tordoff on the inside line, just trims the lawn there, coming down towards Woodcut, but right with him again is Steve Blomqvist. Now, Steve watched these cars being raced many, many years ago, always wanted to race one, and now he gets his ambition, but he wants to win in one as well. Battle pack on for third place. And what about the minis? Together they turn there with uh, Rob Huff, just ahead of Gordon Shedden, who has just been out in the shootout in a GT3 Audi, and now he's put into a Mini Cooper. Absolutely, and yeah, Shedden has really come along, come alive now. He's really starting to grip to grips with it. He's gone uh, a few handful of tenths quicker than the 32.4, which is pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, he's really getting a bit between his teeth now. And so is Steve Blomqvist, he's back up the inside of Sam Tordoff, goes for the race lead, Sam puts two wheels on the grass, and Steve Blomqvist retakes the lead, lap six in this 20-minute race. And not only have we had a change for the lead, but Nicola Benassian has suddenly got back at the party, bringing Andrew Jordan with him. Now, Tordoff, having lost the lead, has lost a little bit of time. Does he have a problem, I wonder? And certainly, look, they're all concertinering for the lead. Yeah, it is. So, in gear it goes. And four rear-wheel drive engaged through the time sensors goes Vaughan Gittin Jr. Now, this looks a little bit more controlled than what he did yesterday. They've been working on that car overnight, trying to get it dialed for drifting. As we all know, Vaughan Gittin Jr., not a stranger to a rear-wheel drive Mustang, piloting one in the Formula Drift Championship in America. This is very tidy from Gittin Jr. at the moment. It comes down, looks for the narrow gate, and that big Mustang an absolute armful. Now you can see at the bottom of your screen, proximity sector lights, as soon as they get fulfilled, they will be illuminated. And there they go, a green means that he has fulfilled the one meter zone, and that will be one second each light off of his time. Von Gittin Jr. makes his way around the barrels, nice flick through, and this is a very tidy job from Von Gittin Jr. in the Mustang. He's him just pulling on the handbrake there, locks up the rear wheels. Slows himself down, an incredible amount of power. 1,400 horsepower from electric motors into quick change differentials, bolted front and rear of that car. And the front drive shaft's not engaged for this part of the weekend. As Vaughan Jr. just misses one and misses the hay bales as he flicks that car towards the fence and across the line. And Vaughan Jr. with a 108. Just dropping one proximity centre, the tidiest run he's done so far on a weekend. Well, from me, that is a very nice run. So I'm going to score it. So with another six minutes of running, even if not all of it has been absolutely flat out. However, while you pull the fuel consumption, let's have a look at the Cobras. Adrian Wilmot coming under attack from Andrew Smith on the inside line there. Smith, number one, gets up the inside. Is he going to go through? Yes, he is. That was brave stuff and absolutely on the limit, both of them. Brilliant yeah. to watch. Perfectly executed by Andrew Smith. And I just wonder if Adrian Wilmot is struggling. He's with the Bitterini out of the race. He was second. And then just as the race gets back up and running, he is out. So a disappointing weekend for Olivier Hart has got no better because he doesn't get a drive. The car is out of the race. What a huge shame. The Bizzarini was looking so strong. And of course, Nick Manassian really doing it justice in the opening session, opening part of this race, leading at times, now parked in the grass. Alex, sports car racer, two racer, will be one to watch. Rowan Atkinson in the Duncan Pitaway owned Plymouth Barracuda says the entry list. Let's just check that it is him that's gone out. Yes, says the timing screen. Rowan, another veteran enthusiast of motor racing, of course, and quite a bit of racing over the years. Charges down through Madwick. So now, Carl's released. Let's see what sort of times we're going to get out of them. Andrew Jordan sharing Pete Chambers' Fortina with his dad, Mike, across the St. Mary's Trophy. So that's got to be uh, one to watch. That's going to deprive Mark Blundell of a go. So all of a sudden, with what just under five minutes to the pit window opening, uh, two quick cars in strife. So Nick Swift and Andrew Jordan would have taken that over. Uh, good battle going on here between Jack Young just being able to keep Tom Christensen at bay. It's something he can dine out on, won't it? Uh, so uh, Jack Young 
and he's followed with Chevrolet Camaro, keeping the similar car of Tom Christensen at bay. 